Mr. Speaker, I beg to present for second reading a bill shortly entitled United Nations Sanctions Counter Proliferation Financing Agreement. Mr. Speaker, the United Nations Sanctions Counter Proliferation Financing Amendment Act, the Act 2023, amends the United Nations Sanctions Counter Proliferation Financing Act, CAP 12.30 in keeping in the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, recommendations, particularly recommendation number seven, which relates to, tar to, to targeted financial sanctions related to proliferation. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia's fourth, fourth round mutual evaluation report, MER, was posted globally on the Financial Action Task Force website as of January 25th, 2021. It's there for everyone to see. St. Lucia's mutual evaluation report highlights the deficiency related to counter-proliferation financing. Since that report, St. Lucia has enacted the United Nations Sanctions Counter-Proliferation Financing Act. However, the Act does not satisfy all the requirements of Recommendation Number 7, pursuant to the Revised Financial Action Task Force FATF 40 recommendations. St. Lucia must address these deficiencies in order to apply for re-rating at the November 2023 plenary. St. Lucia is expected as part of its follow-up processes to apply for re-rating at the November 2023 plenary on the FATF 40 recommendations that related as non-compliant and partially compliant in its mutual evaluation report, the MER. The United Nations Sanction Counter Proliferation Financing Act has been identified as one of the critical enactments in need of, an, of amendments for the purposes of re rating of the re rating process. In order to correct the highlighted deficiencies, Mr. Speaker, amendments to the Act are hereby sought to allow for the following provisions. Recommendation number seven. Counter Proliferation Financing. The United Nations Sanctions Counter Proliferation Financing Act, CAP 12.30, hereafter referred to as the Act, does not explicitly state that the Attorney General is a competent authority in matters of proliferation financing. It is therefore recommended that this be amended to make it clear that the Attorney General is a competent authority. This, this amendment will satisfy the requirement for legal authority to be identified for the purposes of implementing and enforcing targeted financial sanctions. Listed entry A and B under section two of the act should be amended to include an expression and any other successor resolutions. Financial action under section two of the act should refer to section two Section 2, Part A, to the Money Laundering Prevention Act. Section 2 of the Act should also include other business activities as described in Schedule 2, Section 2, Part B, to the Money Laundering Prevention Act. To amend Section 4, 2 of the Act, to include a representative of the Director of Public Prosecutions and a representative of the Department of Finance. To amend Section 1, 4 of the Act, to direct that the actions to be performed therein are performed without delay. <clears throat> to insert a new provision to direct all natural and legal persons with, <clears throat> within the country to freeze without delay any, without prior notice, the funds or other assets of designated persons or entities. <clears throat> to amend section 17 of the Act. To add a provision for Senusha to submit prior notification to the Security Council of the intention to make or receive payments under the contract or to authorize or appropriate the unfreezing of funds, other financial assets, or economic resources for the purpose, 10 working days prior to such authorization. To include the amendment of Section 17, the following, that the Attorney General has determined that the contract is not related to any of the prohibited items materials, equipment, goods, technologies, assistance, training, financial assistance, investment, brokering of services referred to in the United Nations Security Council Resolutions 2231 and any future successor resolutions. 
B, that the Attorney General has determined that the payment is not directly or indirectly received by a person or entity subject to the measures in paragraph 6 of Annex B, Annex B to the United Nations Security Council Resolution, UNSCR. To amend section 23 of the Act to refer to all persons and not simply to financial institutions. To amend section 25 and 26 of the Act to provide for an, exemption, an exception to the prohibition prohibition stated under these provisions where that person entity is licensed, authorized, otherwise notified in accordance with the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions. <clears throat> to insert a new section into the Act to refer to mechanisms for communicating designations to financial institutions and designated non-financial businesses and professions D, called the DNFBPs immediately upon taking such action, freezing action, and providing clear guidance to financial institutions and other personal entities, including DNFPBs, that they are holding targeted funds or assets on the obligations in taking action on the freezing mechanisms. This amendment should make these functions the responsibility of the Financial Intelligence Authority and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank as they are the supervisors for anti-money laundering, counter-terrorism financing, and counter-proliferation financing, designated under the Money Laundering Prevention Act. To amend Section 21 of the Act, to make provision for personal financial institution, or DNFBPs, to report to the competent authority on any assets which have been frozen, or any prohibitive action taken in compliance with the relevant, with the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions, including attempted transactions. To insert a new section into the Act to allow the competent authority to monitor personal entities, including DNFPBs, compliance with the, with the relevant obligations, and when necessary, to have the appropriate civil, administrative, or criminal sanctions attached for non compliance. To insert a new section into the Act to allow for the infusion of funds or other assets of persons or entities with the same or similar name as designated, designated persons or entities with the same or similar names as designated personal entities who are wrongly affected by a freezing mechanism. Upon verification, that said person is not a designated person or entity. This new provision should also create a mechanism to inform financial institutions and DNFPBs of the facts of unfreezing and delisting and their obligations thereto. Relation to the process of unfreezing and delisting, this could be placed in the schedule to the Act. Mr. Speaker, the passing of, this, of these amendments in this Honorable House will bring St. Lucia to being fully compliant with the FATF's recommendation and prevent St. Lucia from being blacklisted. These amendments are therefore presented to you, to this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is another of our obligations and we have another bill, Mr. Speaker, where I will speak on it, on it in more detail, Mr. Speaker. But this is another of our obligations that the international financial, the international financial world is putting on small islands, Mr. Speaker. Small islands, we have to comply with all these rules, all these amendments, Mr. Speaker. Small islands. But, Mr. Speaker, um, the, the clauses have been detailed the changes have been detailed in the in the documents before the, the house mr speaker i don't think there's any need for me to go go through them but all i'm all on, in, the, in the other bill mr speaker i will speak to more detail about our commitments under the fatf mr speaker but this what this bill does it improves recommend makes us makes us compliant with recommendation seven of the Financial Action T Task Force, Mr. Speaker, and it ensures that we make the necessary changes, including making the Attorney General the designated authority, specifying that, Mr. Speaker, and also including uh, the representative of, of the Director of Public Prosecutions in one of in the money as in to have a, a role, Mr. Speaker, in counter proliferation financing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, as I said, I speak in more detail on the other on the other bill and I ask urgent honorable members to support 
this bill, Mr. Speaker. I thank you.